It's all about perspective. It's all about perspective. You know, you can look at a painting and you can see dolphins. <laughs> and you can look at a painting and see a man and a woman. And when we start putting the pieces of the puzzle back together, you say, well, why is this Atlantis shredded in mythology? And why do the Moors say they come from Mars? And who are the gods of Moab? And what do we believe? You know, but I got my Spanish guitar playing today because, you know, I mean, we're talking Spaniards, we're talking Spain, we're talking Morocco, we're talking Moroccan Empire. Oh, South America? Ham. North America? Uh, Ham. Ham's children get this, Ham's children get that, as if there are no other siblings. Just father and son. It's all about perspective. In their perspective, here's the father's portion. Here's the son's push portion. You got the Nimrod situation. You got the Kush, the mighty rulers. And you're just uh, some hijack. You know, you're just following some hijack named Joshua. Jamming them up. Oh, why are you invading us, Joshua? What's with this Moses and this law? What's with this creator? I mean, which part of the board? I mean, how do we want to view their perspective? Do you want to view it like this? The map of a Mexum? Atlantis? Oh, no, nah, not Atlantis. The Moroccan Empire. <laughs> North America, nope. The Moroccan Empire. Northwest Africa. Africa here, Africa here, Africa here. A maximum, 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 maximum. Everything belongs to Moab. Is that divine order? Because they want you to believe that. They want you to believe that, you know, Joshua and these Canaanites, it, we, we got it reversed. Now, we know we got to reverse <laughs> a whole bunch of things, you know. Should we also reverse stuff like, uh, nah, man, um, the Spaniards didn't slaughter a bunch of indigenous people. We must have it in reverse. Maybe the indigenous people slaughtered all the Spaniards. Maybe the indigenous people of South America and North America crept up on Spain and crept up on Portugal and enslaved them and mutilated their families and raped their women lawlessly because we wanted to. We wanted to take what was theirs. Is that the truth? See, the drop is the drop. And we learn now how to Get the substance out of what the enemy has told us and say, yeah, that's the truth that was hidden. That was the truth that was put in plain sight. They always mix truth with their lie. So should we now believe that the Canaanites were a blessing to the land? Their God is the God of all creation. And this is the divine order. A Moroccan Empire. Well then why does the creator of this earth keep sinking the Moroccan Empire? Why must Egypt be sunk and Atlantis be sunk? Why over and over again y'all? If it's divine order or is there a divine energy that keeps destroying the hijack of Thoth aka Muhammad Muhammad. Baphomet.
just to remember, we're only talking about Hermes Trimegistus, who Said Ahmed Amaruda says has a huge part of Islamic tradition. Thoth is huge. Thoth is the man. He's in the Quran, verse 19, 56, 57, mentioned in the book Idris, that he was truthful, a prophet. He's the prophet. He's the man. According to Arab genealogist Muhammad, the prophet, who is believed to have traveled to the heavens on the night of Isra and Midraj, is a direct descendant of Thoth, Hermes Trimegistus. Oh, we're just talking about Thoth. Thoth. Are we just talking Thoth? A syncretinized combination of Greek Hermes, Egyptian god Thoth, Greek Hermes, all fallen angels. Either it is or it motherfucking ain't. Either it is or it ain't. But it is fair use all up on your caboose. And it ain't this hijacked representation of the indigenous land separated and to their father and their son. And today you still worship their father and their son. We're just talking perspective. Let's go. We're just talking perspective. So just remember, cold word, when we read, you know what I'm saying, uh, through Noble Drew Ali or any of these other, you know what I'm saying, bros that, you know, are trying to tell us, man, Africa, Africa, you see these contracts of Northwest and Mexum, they're only referring to America. A Mexum is Africa, and they're still calling Africa America. And this is the West Africa, because this is a colony of this one here, which then became this one here. Started here, then started colonizing here, here. They were driven out by Joshua, they, they admit. And then they had to restructure over here. After they lost this, they came here, got booted out by Joshua, came and set up here, and then came back in 14 something something with Columbus and them. And then conquered it. Boom. Starts here. As you hear the brother again, I'm going to rewind to Prince Yuri Obey. We got to get an important part. We got to get back into spirit science. We got to get back, you know what I'm saying, into really the scripture, man. We got to get back into Joshua. We got we to gotta get into uh, Jeremiah. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's go. Because this is getting real fun. As we, you know, play truth or fate, fact or fiction. What's, what's really the lie? Is the lie the lie? Is the truth the truth? Let's go. I mean, we got nothing to lose here, man. I'm nobody. I ain't got nothing to lose here, right? I ain't shit, right? According to your law, I ain't shit. I ain't have, you know? Or I must be in order to have shit. But if I claim have here, then you still don't have shit? Where's your shit? Why did you lose your shit? Why were you out of order? So remember, a Maxim Africa is only America. Their a Maxim Africa is America. All right. Remember, we're just talking about the teachings of Prophet Drew Ali, the Moabab, Moabite prophet. In the Moor Science Temple of America, on this subject reads thus. The industrious acts of the Muslims of Northwest and Southwest Africa. Where's Northwest and Southwest West Africa? I mean, I got to keep doing this because your brains are configured differently. It's not repetitive. It's just, you know, a reminder. Right? Again, the word games, man, the word games. The industrious acts. So this is from their prophet, Noble Drelli. All right. The, the our brother, their prophet. This is our, this is our brother, but boy, boy, were these acts not brotherly when it comes to the war from brother to brother, and what's really happening? That's what we're uncovering, the drop of that. You know I mean, this is all love and true respect to all our brothers that are finding themselves. So, you know, what I'm saying, I hope you take it like that. But you know, the most high rocks, man. You know, we ain't got no time to sugarcoat this shit, man. Time is running out. Let's go. The industrious acts of the Muslims of Northwest and Southwest Africa. 
These are the Moabites, Hamathites, or Hamites, Ham, Canaanites, who were driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua and received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle there. So the Atlantean, Atlantean pharaohs gave them permission to settle somewhere else. That's the same thing Thoth is talking about, saying go to the land of the hairy barbarian, tablet number one. In later years, they formed themselves kingdoms. These kingdoms are called this day Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, Tunis, and Tripoli. Now check it. The industrious acts of the Muslims of Northwest and Southwest Africa. Before this, you probably thought Africa. Oh yeah, you know. Uh, North Africa, you know, Berber, Tartaria, Tar Tartary, Barbaria. No, Northwest and Southwest Africa are weird. Right here, North and South America, according to their map of a maxim. Now you can decipher what the fuck is going on. So the Moroccan Empire, under the pharaoh's permission over here. Well, what pharaohs in Egypt? Now we can pull that research like the brother Hiram Hart is digging deep into that Grand Canyon. Keep digging, my brother, because we need more attention on that. Northwest of Mexum, Africa, here. South America is southwest of Mexum, Africa. So when this brother's talking Africa, he's talking America on you. Let's go. The industrious acts of the Muslims of North, West, and Southwest Africa. These are the Moabites. So we're only talking America. Screw the Africa. I'm going to say it like it really is. All right? Now that you know. So the industrious acts of the Muslims of the Americas, these are the Moabites, Moab, Utah. Like a brother pointed out, uh, Elgin or Elgon, you know what I'm saying? The father of uh, Ruth is also an Elgon, I believe, in around the Four Corners, maybe Utah, I believe. So these are the Moabites, Hamathites, Ham, 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 Ham. Ham, Ham, so all this is Ham, all these are Moab. Here's my question. So when you recruit someone to be a Moor, are you recruiting them to be a Moabite? Are you telling them you're joining a family of Moabites? Are you making them take some type of, you know, quasi-DNA situation to prove they're a Moabite? Or, you know, do you know in their lineage that they're a Moabite or... Do you just recruit the numbers and the true Moabites are the ones that are in leadership? I mean, that might seem like the obvious course. Now, what's interesting here is that uh, Columbus had this, you know, drop that we dropped before about the Orinoco River flowing out of paradise, out of the terrestrial paradise. Now, you see how this river right here is flowing. What are they calling this? The Orinoco or the Euphrates? You see how the Euphrates connects from here to here? It's the same Euphrates River. Just because this land ain't here don't mean there's not a flow, y'all. Y'all. Right? So, you know, we're connecting all this stuff. We're connecting all this stuff. You see how the Mississippi here runs north and south? And this now also runs north and south? Both this river and this river have a lot in common. Okay? All this stuff is a grid. You know what I'm saying? But they have hijacked your grid. So again, the industrious acts of the Muslims of North and South America. These are the Moabites, Hamathites, Hamites, Canaanites, who were driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua and received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle in that portion of Egypt in later years. So they received the Atlantean hookup. In later years, they formed themselves kingdoms. Ah. These kingdoms are now called Morocco, Algiers, Tunis, and Tripoli. So now you just have the Moroccan Empire. The Moroccan Empire. Well, what if you're not a Moabite? How does that work out? I mean, are you saying all melanated people are Moabites? Moors from Mars? Moors from Mars? We're going to get there. We got to get back there. Back in the spirit science, man. Moors from Mars. Is it Mars or Moors? Mars or Moors, Morabite, 
more bite. We got some more digging to do into this more bite. And what does it relate? I mean, they seem to have something against Joshua, you know, and I see why. Now, does it mean that Joshua doesn't exist, that history is wrong and that they're right? And, and, and we're being given something else and not, we ain't able to translate something from the paleo different than what they're getting from the Moabite text? Does Moses not exist? Are you calling Moses a hijack? Well, clearly you're hanging on to a lot of prophets in that Quran. So how far are we going to break this shit down? Because the questions are going to, you know, get to the, to the, <laughs> from the root to the tube. And this is back in, you know what I'm saying, uh, the brother noble Drew Ali, man. Let's go. Now remember, we got this. The key of civilization. This is off the uh, morescienceteple.org. Get the link, pull it up. It's all underneath. I keep the links phone for you. Y'all got to give me that. I keep the links right there for you, all man. And uh, a lot of the family does the same thing, man, because we want you to get it all. The key of civilization was and is in the hands of the Asiatic nations, the Moorish, who were ancient Moabites, Moabites. Again, when you recruit somebody to be a Moor, how do you know if they're a Moabite? You see, at least when you deal with Israelite camps, when you recruit someone to be in an Israelite camp, you're at least saying that, you know what I'm saying, come rock these commandments, come rock the law of the creator. So is it when you recruit them to be a Moabite, you know what I'm saying? It's the same like, you know, rock this, you know, Islam, rock this, you know what I'm saying? Rock this God. Or do you consider that? I mean, clearly, you know what I'm saying? These are the lines that each, each case is case by case. But at least I'm saying with the Israelite camps, they're being, you know, you can call it a, you know, oh, it's, it's, it's a. A uh, spiritual type of thing is change your life. You know what I'm saying? Rock, rock the commandments. Rock with the Creator. You know what I'm saying? Be of the, you know, we are Israelites. Whether you are Israelite or you're not an Israelite, rock with the Creator. I mean, most kind of keep something similar to that, but with the more, with the Moabites, is it you know recruited in that way, or is it recruited into a a system that's connected to this law? That's connected to this particular tribe of Moabites that are all about this Atlantis and Thoth and celestial frequency. Celestial frequency for what? One world conquer. A Moroccan empire. Because it was like that in Atlantis before Atlantis fell. But we have history before Atlantis. How come we don't discuss that? Why does an energy keep toppling, toppling, and ruling over the people? The Moorish who were ancient Moabites and the founders of the holy city of Mecca. The Egyptians who were the Hamites or Hamathites and of direct descendant of Mizraim, the Arab Arabians. The seed of Hagar, Japanese and Chinese, the Hindus of India, the descents of the near of the ancient Canaanites, the Hindus of area, India, Canaanites, Hittites and Moabites of the land of Canaan, the Asiatic nations of North, South and Central America. Now, listen up. He done. He done claimed all those other nations for for Canaan straight up. They're Canaanites, right? Moab, Hittite, Moabs of the land of Canaan. Now, listen. Listen about the Americas. It's very interesting. The Asiatic nations of North, South, and Central America, the Moorish nations, and Mexicans, Mexicans of North America, Brazilians, Argentinians, and Chileans, Chileans in South America. Period. <laughs> All right. So this is that was the sentence. He didn't say that these people were Canaanites. He just stopped the sentence. So. The Asiatic nations of North, South, Central America, the Moorish nations of Mexican, North America, Brazilians, Argentinians, Chileans, and North and South and South America, period. That's it. So I don't know what he was getting at, but there's no end to that sentence. Now, Colombians, Nicaraguans, and the natives of South Salvador and Central America, etc. All right. So then he says, all of these are Muslims now. Are Muslims Canaanites? I mean, when you when you transfer paradigms like that, you go from 
Moabites. I mean, here you're claiming tribes and here you're claiming a, what, philosophy? Religion? We know the etymology of Muslim. Thanks to my brother, let us find the truth. So, you know, we understand it's people submitting to a promise. Now, what promise? What promise? Everyone may have a different promise. So these are all Muslims. Are these Islam? Are you talking religion or are you talking tribe? Because you go from the descendants of ancient Canaanites, Hittites, and Moabites to, oh, but these Americans are all people who submit to a promise. They're, they're Muslims. Then it goes into the Turks, and the, the Turks are the true descendant of Hagar. So the Turks are the true descendants of Hagar, who are the chief protectors of the Islamic creed of Mecca, Hagar, Turks, beginning from Muhammad the first. Bang. Listen up, listen up. The Turks are the true descendants of Hagar, who are the chief protectors of Islamic creed of Mecca, Turks. Beginning from Muhammad, Turks. Muhammad the first, Turks, descendants of Hagar, Ishmael. Whoa. So the Turks are Ishmaelites from Ishmael. Beginning from Muhammad the first, the founding of the unity of Islam by the command of the great universal. It's always universal, right? It's always celestial. Because Thoth runs his ass off from above the barrier. Oh, we will get that in one of these parts. We'll get Tablet 8 all up on you. You know what I'm talking about. Now, let me get down here a little bit. The Asiatic Society was founded by a man. Hold up, did I skip something? All right, cool, yeah. Let me get this, let me get this. Because this is a continuation of Noble Drali. It was the opinion of Sir William Jones that a great nation of blacks formerly possessed the dominion of Asia. Okay. And held the seat of empire at Sidon. These must have been the people called by Mr. Maurice Cushites or Kuthites described in Genesis in Asia. Okay. And the opinion that they were blacks is cooperated by translators of the Pentiot called the Seventy, constantly rendering the word Kush by Ethiopia. So clearly, Noble Drew Ali ain't destroying the book of Genesis and Exodus and all that. He's rocking with it and actually referencing it, even the translators of the Pentiot, to, uh, you know, Confirm that the Kushites or Kuthites have something to do with Asia. So he's making his Asia point using the Pentiot, using the Torah. It's not really a matter of information per se, as some would try to say, oh, well, of course we know, you know, that the shit has been hijacked. Sure, that's why we're getting the babies out. Whether it's one translation or another, we're matching it up. You know what I'm saying? We're, you know, getting the precepts, we're breaking it down. You know what I'm saying? We're getting back to the Septuagint. We're getting other stuff out of that. But at the end of the day, we understand that whatever translation we get, it's difficult, damn near impossible to get the pure water out of any text. So all you can do is connect it with our indigenous truth. With order. In stone. That which we can connect to. That which we rock with. A creator that's above the barrier, not below it. Not trapped below it. So let's go. Well, that's what it comes down to. Do you worship? Do you rock order or chaos? Now, see, I worship order because I swim in it. It's that thing I'm swimming in. So I worship the consciousness that I'm swimming in. Because the more I worship, the more I give it love, the more it loves me back. Cause and effect. But the more you resist the consciousness you're swimming on and think that you're making some quasi-consciousness and a quasi-conscious community of, of consciousness of celestial barrier shit. And nobody's rocking with order and none of this stuff is being, you know, exposed. Now we have a sword, an energetic sword to swing and this is what happens. All praise the creator above the barrier. 
So he uses the Pentiac here. All right. So let's get it right here. It can only be known to have existed from accidental circumstances which have escaped amidst the ruins of empires and the wrecks of time of this nation. We have no account, but it must have flourished after the deluge. So he's talking about what? Cush. Let me get back it up. It says, it is very certain that if the opinion be well founded, we must go for the time when the empire flourished to a period anterior to all our regular histories. It can only be known to have existed from accidental circumstances which have escaped the ruins of empires and the wrecks of time of this, na of this nation. We have no account, but it must have flourished after the deluge, or after the flood, all right? And as our regular chronological systems fill up the time between the flood and what is called known undoubted history, called known undoubted history, what? Known undoubted history. So I guess the flood is a known undoubted history. If it be allowed to have existed, its existence will of course prove that no dependence can be placed on the parts of that history. It will show that all the early chron chronology is false. All right, so man, you sit me and this brother down, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm sure we agree on a lot of things, including the fact that this chronology is false. Do we have to go get it for you again that the chronology is false? For the story of this empire is not told. It is certain that its existence can only be known for insulated circumstances collected from various quarters and combining to establish the fact. But if I succeed in collecting a sufficient number to carry out convictions to an impartial mind, the empire must be allowed to have existed. So check it. The Asiatic Society. So this is a, that was the end of the quote. All right. So the Asiatic Society was founded by a man named Sir William Jones which was dedicated to the study of the Eastern history. Godfrey Higgins thought the Moorish misnomer blacks, Moorish <laughs> misnomer blacks, progenitors to, to humanity could be found in ancient Chaldea. While William Jones insisted based on finds that he had reviewed, ruled the whole of the Eastern world, including the area encompassing Egypt from ancient Sidon, which was anciently the capital of Canaan, Canaan, Sidon, as can be seen in the quote above in the El Armana, Armana letters. So we heard, keep hearing about these Armana letters, Armana letters, which were a series of diplomatic correspondences between Egypt and the rulers, what the French call the Levant. So between Egypt and the Levant, a diplomatic correspondence between Egypt and the Levant from the direction of the sunrise. We find a striking letter from the rulers of Gubal named Rib Habda, Rib Habda, and or his successor, Ili, Ili or Li, Ra, Rapi, Li Rapi, pleading for assistance from the ruling pharaoh, possibly Akhenaten. We're going to get into this Akhenaten against the Hapiru Hebrews of Joshua. This was between the years 1350 and 1335. So again, they're not saying that these Hebrews don't exist. They're just saying that they were wrong in displacing them. They were wrong. These Hebrews were wrong in invading them. You know, it's like another side of the story. I mean, hey, they got their side of the story. They were wrong. So therefore, we deserve everything. We don't deserve to be conquered anywhere. Moab should rule everything from father to son. They were wrong to want anything. These Hebrews, this Joshua. You know, man, on that note, let's get into some Joshua. Before we get into a little spirit science and go right back into that Prince Uriel Bay. And this is just the intro on the phone. Vibe on out, man. Y'all vibe out for a second, man. Just kick back. A lot of reading, man. You got to just kick back to it. 
but it gets so much more fun. Because the truth has us all surrounded. A reading out of the interlinear Hebrew Old Testament. I'll leave a link. It came to pass now after the death of Moses, Moshe, the servant of Hawa, spoke that Hawa unto Joshua, the son of Nun, minister Moses is, Moses is saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over Jordan. This thou and all people, this unto the land which I do give them, give to them, to the children of Israel. So right from here, you know what I'm saying? If you're a Moabite, you know, I don't know how you start, but somehow you have to prove that the creator is not tribal and that this tribe of Israel is not the tribe of the creator. And it's hard to prove when you're rocking with an ancestor. Hermes, Triggies, Megistes. According to ancient Arab genealogists, genealogists, Muhammad the prophet, who was also believed to have tra traveled to the heavens on the night of Israel Miraj, is a direct descendant of Hermes Trismegistus. Trismegistus. So if you're rocking with a fallen angel, they call him thrice great Hermes. Hermes Trismegistus. Ahmad Albuni considered himself a follower of the Hermetic teachings. That's what they're doing. Hermetic magic, Moorish magic. And his contemporary, Ibn Aribi, mentions Hermes Trigmagistus in his writing. He speaks of Hermes travels to vast cities outside Earth possessing technology. Technology, people. It's about technology far superior than ours. Moors are from Mars. And meeting with the 12th Iman, the ninth generation from the 3rd. Uh, Al Hussein, the third Iman, referring here to the masses of wisdom from the Emerald Tablets, man. Come on, man. Come on. We're just talking about uh, a little magic science, man. We're just talking magic science, man. You know, Thoth said it, man. He said, then raised I my staff. We're in the first tablet of the Emerald Tablets right here. Then raised I my staff. Wait, first he had to witness Atlantis sinking. I mean, you know, let's get a visual. First he had to see Atlantis fall. That's funny how they have Atlantis and then another area that they colonize in Atlantis called a Mexican. And then everything else is called a Mexican. Or maybe the whole thing is called a Mexican. <laughs> so first thought had to see Atlantis fall. He says, you know. And then he had to gather his people, entered the great ship of the master, up where we rose into the morning. So he entered the great ship of the master. Is that the creator? Nah, this guy goes underground. Upward we rose into the morning. Dark beneath us lay the temple. Suddenly over it rose the waters. It was flooding, vanished from earth until the appointed time was the great temple. Fast we fled towards the sun in the morning until we... Beneath us lay the children of Kim. So after that, they fled. They fled. They fled. Into Kush. Then they camped out, formed their Morocco empire with the permission of the Pharaoh. And then came back here and helped conquer you in the 1400s. Now, where everyone who claims to be more part of this, this, and that, 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 nah, man, but this is Thoth we're talking. And Thoth has an army. 
Then raised I my staff and directed a ray of vibration, striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone of the mountain. Your God don't have to strike you still in your tracks as a fragment of stone with a ray of vibration and tell you about the might of Atlantis and have you cower by his display of magic science until he releases you from the ground when he releases you. And Come on, man. Only a hijack has to hijack your frequency like this, I tell you. Oh, yeah. We're just talking Joshua. The industrious acts of the Muslims of North South America. These are the Moabites, Hamites, Canaanites who were driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua. This was between the years 1350 and 1335, of course. Our chronology and timelines are all gone. But the years closely attributed to the raiding of Canaan by Joshua. Oh, the raiding of Canaan. It was a raid. It was the invasion of Canaan. The descendants of Joshua called Hebrews and Jews today have written in the Psalms of the Torah. 83. Psalms 83. A confederacy even they have it right here look <laughs> they're using it for their purpose <laughs> come they say let us destroy them as a nation oh was this Joshua destroying them as a nation or was this them destroying Hebrews as a nation Israelites as a nation that the name of Israel be remembered no more. With one mind they plot together. They form an alliance against you. The tents of Edom. And the Ishmaelites of Moab. Moab. And the Hagarites. And Gabal. And Ammon. Ammon. Amalek. Philistia. With the people of Tyre. Even Assyria. Assyria. Has joined them to lend strength to the descendants of Lot. These are the predecessors to the Moorish colonies that would later settle in North Africa. When did they settle in North Africa? After they were driven out of Northwest Amexum Africa, America, driven out by Joshua here, then they settled over here. That's why they were itching to get their colony cracking again. And who was going to help them? Who would sign treaties for the bedroom? You don't make treaties for your house, but your invaders would do treaties and split your house up and call it ham, ham. Call it the dominion of ham, the dominion of Cush, Shem who, Joshua who, <laughs> what? Jo what are you talking about, Joshua? Oh, that guy? These were the descendants or predecessors to the Moorish colonies that would later settle in North Africa after being driven from their homeland, Canaan, Canaan. So they're saying really their homeland was America, Canaan, and they were driven out of America and had to settle in so-called Africa today. It is Israel which displaced them, but the Torah reads as if these, our ancestors, are the aggressors. Okay. So it's not so much uh, Moses not existing or Joshua not existing or King David not existing. It's, yeah, 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 we know, but y'all was wrong because you should have just let us have everything. You were aggressing us. You were aggressing our Moroccan empire everywhere. It's hard to call somebody the aggressor when you have only this in mind and the creator's order does not rock with this does not rock with thought oh but we just talking joshua i mean joshua's the aggressor right so let's let's get some joshua drop again let's just start from the top it came to pass now after the death of moses the servant of the creator hawa spoke that the creator unto Joshua, the son of Nun, minister, Moses is saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, 
Therefore arise, go over Jordan, this thou and all people, this unto the land which I do give to them. So you have the dweller telling Thoth to go regroup after the flood, right? Over the world then broke the great waters, drowning and sinking, changing earth's balance until only the temple of light was left, standing on the great mountain of Undal, still rising out of the waters, some there who were living, saved from the rush of the fountains, what, of the waters from above the barrier, the waters above was drowning you, call to me then to, call to me then the master, who's their master, the dweller. Some call him Lucifer, some call him Thoth, Zeus, let's go. Saying, gather ye together my people. So their dweller wanted Thoth and them to gather as well. Take them by the arts ye have learned them, the magic science of far across the water, until ye reach the land of the hairy barbarian, dwelling in caves of the desert. Follow there the plan that ye know, the plan. And then he said, I gathered my people, entered the great ship. All right, all right. So, that, so he was gathering after Atlantis. Now, what else was happening after Atlantis? Moses leading, leading the children, you know, who uh, even in the Mayan quiches, that's why I'm so glad we got the Annals of the Coxy Quails, the uh, Mayan quiche, uh, the Papu, the Papu Va, Papu Va. You know, get all that drop, you know. We did. <laughs> you already know we went rounds and rounds on the Papu Va, the quiches and all that. So, um, you know, they're following their chief with his staff, parting the waters, leading them back after, you know what I'm saying, some, some, some battle or something took place as well. So, again, Atlas is Egypt. When Egypt was sunk in Atlantis, Egypt is sunk in Egypt. But this is Egypt. Not this. This is Egypt. This is what they also call Canaan. Then they said that Joshua kicked them out of Canaan after they settled back in here because they didn't want to leave it. You even read in Greek mythology where Poseidon didn't want to leave and his father had to sit him down and, and other folks was like, yo, you might want to do that because the creator is going to get, you know, he's going to get on your ass. And Poseidon didn't listen to nobody according to Certain, uh, we gotta get some of that Greek mythology because it's playing now, it's playing now, it's playing now. So we got them stuck here, then they go here, then they come back here, and all this in their mind is Morocco. So the Most High is gathering his people. Now, therefore, arise, go over Jordan. This thou and all people, this unto the land which I do give them, to the children of Israel, every place that shall tread the sole of your feet, your foot upon Israel. Not Moab, but they say, oh, not. This is all supposed to read Moab, Morocco. The Creator is saying, every place that the children of Jacob shall tread the sole of your foot upon that have i given unto you as i said unto moshe everywhere you go everywhere you go in your promised land is yours everywhere you step foot on nope ham ham morocco moroccan under the pharaoh's permission so does the pharaoh create the divine order or the creator. Let's just get true and let's get real. Is your power going to Thoth and the creator uh, or Thoth as your creator? Is Thoth your creator? Rock with him then and say, that's my creator. Thoth created everything. Rock with your creator. Tell the people that they are being converted into this creator, but don't say that this creator is this Allah that you're calling this Thoth. This energy is the creator because it's not. Zeus is not the creator. Jesus is not the creator. Muhammad Allah is not the creator. It is not what's above the barrier with which you got is connecting to Hermes Trigmagistes.
a direct descendant. Direct descendant. According to Arab genealogists, Muhammad the Prophet is also believed to have traveled to the heavens and is a direct descendant of Hermes Trimagesti. So, you know, um, you know, we're just talking about from the Belus. Baphomet is a deity, demon, or symbolic icon. All right, originated they say in the 14th century, but where is it stemming from? The Baphomet, the name Baphomet, originally was a deformation, a deformation of the name Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, of Thoth. So this was their look. They hijacked everything. They hijacked Zeus, Thoth, everything. We're, we're getting back to the indigenous drop. So yes, when we get back into the indigenous drop, you have this Muhammad, you have this Thoth. And I'm sure it looked a lot better than this. And I'm sure it was shiny and cool. But is it the creator? And why do you feel like it gives you divine order over everything? That is parasitic. To the children of Israel, every place that shall tread the sole of your foot upon, everywhere you walk, have I given you. As I said unto Moses, Lebanon, and this even unto river, the great the great, the river Euphrates. Remember the river Euphrates in America. Should I get it again for you? The river Euphrates in America. Should I get it again? And all the land of the Hittites. And unto see the great toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not be able to stand any man before thee all the days of thy life. Joshua. And I was with Moses and I will be with, with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake. Be strong and of good courage, for thou shalt divide for an inheritance people unto this land. So you will have your inheritance divided for your people, for the Creator's tribe, which I swore unto the fathers to give. Only be thou strong, courageous, and very, and very that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. What law? Allah's law. Or we talk about the law. Where did Islam, where did Muhammad get not eating swine from? The Hebrews, Israelites. All this law is coming out of their law. Which command Moses. Which commanded Moses, my servant, not thee. Turn from it. Turn from it the right hand or the left. That thou mayest prosper with her, with her soever. With her soever thou goest shall not depart book of the law this out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way and then thou shalt have good success have i have not i commanded thee to be strong and of good courage be not afraid be not afraid neither be dismayed for with the creator thy god the whithersoever, the whithersoever thou goest, commanded. Then Joshua, the officers of the people, the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over Jordan, this to go in to possess the land which the Creator, your God, giveth you to possess. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to half the tribe of Manasseh. Are we saying that these tribes didn't exist, Moab? Or are you saying that they're all just hijacks? Are you saying that these people are worshiping the devil, just coming to take down the Moroccan Empire? Or are you worshiping that so-called static frequency? And you're taking down divine order, which is why you keep following and getting sunken. Oh, why are your temples underwater, Thoth? Why couldn't you stop it, Thoth? Half of Manasseh spoke Joshua, saying, Remember the word which commanded Moses, the servant of the Creator, Hawa, saying, Hawa, your God hath given you rest and hath given land what we need. Land, what does the kingdom have? Land, you this 
your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses, which, which gave Moses you on this side, Jordan. But ye shall pass armed before your brethren, all the mighty men of valor and help, which have given the creator your brethren, have possessed also as you and they the land. It which the creator your God giveth them, then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy. Gave Moses servant the creator you on this side Jordan toward the uh, toward the sun rising toward the sun rising and they answered Joshua saying all that thou commandest us we will do and with or, whithersoever thou sendest us wheresoever you send us we will go and all things according as we hearken unto Moses so we will hearken unto thee only be the creator the creator with thee and he was with Moses as he was with Moses and all that doth rebel against the commandment and will not hearken unto thy words thou commandest him he shall be put to death only be strong and of good courage I mean we're just talking Joshua now let's go to Joshua 3 Start right here. Verse uh verse nine. When you are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, in Jordan ye shall stand still, said and Joshua unto the children of Israel. I know it's a little weird kind of reading it like this, but it's interesting that this is a, you know, Hebrew uh, interlinear Hebrew Old Testament. So, you know, we're getting, we got all the, uh, you know, all the strong coordinates for everything. So we can look it up as we go. It's a good uh, study tool for sure. So let's go, let's go. Example star. Man. All right, there's so much good stuff here, but I'm just gonna go. Let's go check. For tomorrow will the Creator among wonders spoke and Joshua unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. So this is a technology. All right, what's buried in the money pit? These Templars. What's going on? These Templars. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people and the Creator unto Joshua. They, this will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know not, or that they may know that I was with Moses and I will be with. And thou shalt command the priest that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When ye, when ye are come, to the brink of water of Jordan. In Jordan ye shall stand. And Joshua unto the children of Israel. Come hither. And hear the words of the creator your God. And Joshua hereby ye shall know. That God the living among you. And he will without fail drive out. You and he will without fail drive out. From before you. The Canaanites. The Hittites. The Hivites. The Perizzites, the Gargashites, Gergashites, the Amorites, the Jebusites. Now these are all one family. These are the Moroccan Empire. This is the Moroccan Empire. This is the Confederacy against the tribe. The tribe. The law keepers. Those that are connected above the barrier. And the army that is gathered in the celestial has divided this family 
and has used his family. And this energy has sunken, but we are connecting our indigenous truth. And oh boy, oh boy, does it shed a light on the rest of the board. Because this doesn't make sense. That don't make sense. Not to the rest of the tribes outside of who? The Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Gergesites, Amorites, Jebusites. So outside of this, <laughs> behold, the Ark of the Covenant of all the of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. Now, therefore, take you twelve, you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel. Out of every tribe a man, and it shall come to pass, shall rest as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest that bear the ark of the Lord, of the creator of all the earth, in the rivers Jordan, when the waters of Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand heap upon, upon a, and it cuts off, and it came to pass, removed from the people from the tents, Removed when the people from the tents to pass over Jordan and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people were come. And as they that bore the Ark unto Jordan and the feet of the priests that bore the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water. For Jordan overfloweth, overfloweth all his banks, all the time of harvest. At, all right. So we got this march unto Jericho for the people passed over right against Jericho. All the Israelites passed over on dry ground because of this energy, this energy, this energy. That the waters which come down from above rose up heap upon a far very from the city that beside Zeratine and those that came down towards the city of the plain. See, the salt felled were cut off. Were cut off. Who was cut off? The Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Gergesites, Amorites. All right. Now, you know, we also want to get, you know, some of this Jeremiah 48 because it goes right into, you know, this is just out the uh, BLB, King James right there. Jeremiah 48 against Moab thus saith the creator the God of Israel woe unto Nebo where is Mount Nebo Utah Moab Utah Utah now do you still think this is play play Moab is in Utah Utah these people making treaties man they making treaties man so we're just talking about you, dog. Woe unto Nebo, for it is spoiled. Kerithium is confounded and taken. Meshgab is confounded and dismayed. There shall be no more praise of Moab. In Heshbon, they have devised evil against it. Come and let us cut it off from being a nation. Although thou shalt be cut down, O madman, the sword shall pursue thee. A voice of crying shall be from Horan. Haranam, spoiling the great destruction. Moab is destroyed, and her little ones have caused a cry to be heard. Remember. At the end of this period, after uh, the king of Moab, Eglon, Ruth the Moab's father, Ruth the Moab's father, remember Ruth the Moab, she has a father, Eglon, we're talking Eglon, we're talking uh, later her marrying this Boaz, who is this, you know, comes from this, you know, Judah lineage, and that's where you're getting uh, King David coming right out of this lineage, she's the great grandmother of King David. Moab is destroyed, her little ones have caused a cry to be heard, for in the going up of Louis, continual weeping shall go up, for in the going down of Horanium, the enemies have heard a cry of destruction, flee, save your lives, and be like the heath in the wilderness, for because thou have trusted in thy works and in thy treasures, Thoth, 
The house shall also be taken down, and Shamash, Kamash, Kamash, that's their God, shall go forth into captivity with his priests and his princes together, and the spoiler shall come upon every city. So it was all about driving out their fallen angel God. But now they protect this God and say, that's that's cool. Well, how come that God didn't save your ass? Did that God promise to return to save you, to save all Negroes, or just to save Moabites? See, our God will save all Negroes, but you better be in order and stop worshiping hijacks if you ain't hijack free. And the spoiler shall come upon every city, and no city shall escape. The valley also shall perish, and the plain shall be destroyed. I mean, look at Moab, Utah today. Look at Moab, Utah today. Look at Moab today. As the Creator hath spoken, look at it today. Give wings unto Moab that it may flee and get away, for the cities thereof shall be desolate without any to dwell therein. Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Creator deceitfully. They're being deceitful, this thought frequency, this Muhammad. And cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Moab hath been at ease from his youth, and he hath settled on his leaves. And he hath not been emptied from vessel to vessel, neither hath he gone into captivity. They have not gone into captivity with you. No. That's why they know who they are. That's why they want the whole pie, this Morocco. That's why they want everything, this Morocco. They have not gone into captivity. They've only put you in captivity. And now at the end, they want you to come join them as you wake up. Now do you overstand? Neither hath he gone into captivity, Moab, the Moroccan Empire. Therefore, his taste remained in him, and his sense is not changed. Therefore, behold, the days come, says the Creator, Hawa, that I will send unto him wanderers that shall cause him to wander, and shall empty his vessels, and break their bottles. And Moab shall be ashamed of Shamash, Shamash, their God. Baal, as the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel, their confidence. So this happened to us too, bros. Our God is equal opportunity when it comes to getting your ass kicked. You've seen us get our ass kicked. He even let you kick our ass. But soon you will be ashamed of this energy. That energy don't even want you. Because that energy is bound until you stop worshiping it. The Most High will not let this energy vibrate until every one of its worshipers stop worshiping Thoth, Muhammad, Christ. Until you come out of all those, those energies are bound. So they're rooting for me, not you. They're the biggest, you know what I'm saying, fans of Drop Nation there could ever be. Because we are freeing those energies, not you. You're keeping them in bondage by worshiping anything but the Creator. Let's go. Let's just go. Let's jump here to the religions and Jewish encyclopedia. Religion of Moab. References to the religion of Moab are scanty. The Moabs were polytheists like the other early Semites, they say. And they introduced the Hebrew invaders. So now they're calling Joshua the invader, right? I wonder who's behind this. To join in their sacrifices. See, this Jewish encyclopedia is not for Hebrews. Remember, they've hijacked Hebrews. So they've hijacked Hebrews and Moab has hijacked Hebrews. They're kind of rocking hand in hand to keep you asleep. Psalms 83. The Moabites, all right, so, blah, blah, blah. so it says they introduced the Hebrew invaders or these Hebrews. All right, so they introduced the Israelites to join in their sacrifices. That's in Numbers and Judges, all right? Their chief god was Shemash. And now we got Shemash, just like Jeremiah. So that they are even called the people of Shemash. At times, especially. Now, when you recruit people to be a more, 
and are you refer are you revealing that they may not be Moabites? Are you revealing that their people worship Shabash? And is that also Allah? And if all those are the same, is all that trigamagistus? I mean, where does thought fit into that? Is it not all about thought and, dwe and the dweller? Is it not about the dweller and thought? At times, especially in dire peril, human sacrifices were offered to him. So you be hearing about these sacrifices to Baal, to Shamash, by these people who are already here being driven out by Joshua, as by Mesha. Again, who's Mesha? Well, you got to click on Ruth the Moabite, the great-grandmother of King David. Eglon, her, her daddy, who's the king of Moab. Now, his brother is... Eglon. And you can look up Eglon. It's, I guess, the city of Eglon. Somewhere around Utah, I believe. Love to the bro, uh, Francisco. All right. He's the son of Baalak, Baalak, king of Moab. When you click on Baalak, it says he was killed by Israelites, just like Eglon. This is the tribal war. And he's the half-brother of Mesha. Now, Mesha is also the son of Balak as well. So both Eglon and Mesha are sons of Baalak. And it's said again here. Human sacrifices were offered to this Chamash as by Mesha, Ruth's uncle, all right, I'm sure her daddy too, who gave up his son and hire or here to him in 2 Kings 3. Nevertheless, Solomon built for this abomination of Moab, for this abomination of Moab on the hill before Jerusalem, a high place in 1 Kings, which was not destroyed until the reign of uh, Josiah, Josiah, all right, second king. So, you know, you remember Solomon building these other temples. Here we go. The Moabite stone also mentions in line 17 a female counterpart of Chamash, Ishtar, Ashtar. Whoa, stop. You know how Shiva, Siva has a counterpart, you know, Krishna, and all that. So, Ishtar, Ashtar, Ashereth. Isis, this is what you do with your Christmas tree when you're putting presents underneath it. Jeremiah 10 tells you not to do that. Shamash, Ashtar, so this is also probably, you can call him Azazel. All right? <laughs> you can call it Thoth. I mean, come on. And God Nebo, so he says the Moabite stone also mentions in line 17 a female counterpart of Shamash, Ishtar or Ashtar, Shamash, and a God Nebo. The well-known Babylonian divinity, while the cut up cult of Baal, 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 Baalak, Baal, Baal, pure, seems to have been marked by sensuality. All right, so you got this sex situation. Since the Moabites had opposed the invasion of Palestine, they, like the Amorites, were excluded from the congregation until the tenth generation. Deuteronomy. Nehemiah, man, this link is, y'all gotta look it up. This law was violated during their exile, however, and Ezra and Nehemiah sought to compel a return to the ancient custom of exclusion. So, Nehemiah and Ezra were also your prophets fighting against these Moroccan empire. I mean, the Ezra rock with Moab. All right. Let's get it to the end. The exilian usage or exile usage had had royal sanction. The harem of Solomon included Moabite women. All right. Moabite women. All right. Well, we, the great grandmother of King David is a Moabite. So Moabite women are all mixed in this thing. On the other hand, the fact that the marriages of Beth Lehem Judah, Beth Lehem Judah, Ephra, Ephrathites, Chilon, Chilion, and Malon to the Moabite women, Orpha and Ruth. All right, so you have these Judah and Ephraim being married into Moab with Ortha and Ruth. Ruth, the Moabite. 
great grandmother of King David. Again, love to Christopher Bryan for this wonderful drop here that you know gets us to connect this Moabite lineage and the connection of the tribe and these kings of Judah. All right, she's coming right out of the hijack though. Very interesting, right? Okay. All right. So, in the marriage of the latter after her husband's death to Boaz, like we got from Judah, who was the great grandfather of David, also mentioned with no shade of reproach. Interesting. Shows that the law had fallen into abeyance or absence, abeyance, at the comparatively earlier period and had become a mere priestly restriction. All right, then it gets into Nimrod, clay, inscri clay inscriptions of Tiglath Pilsler, Pilsler the Moabite, Tiglath Pilsler, the Pilsler, the Moabite king, Salmanu, perhaps Shalman, who sacked Bethlehem, Arbel, and Hosea is mentioned as tributary to Assyria. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me just get this last part here. It says the Egyptian inscription Moab is mentioned once on the base of one of six colossal figures of Luxor. So, you know, Moab just wants to claim Morab, Moab, 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 Moab. All right. All right. This is what I'm going to do, man, you know. Yeah, I'm working on a new site, man. Don't you worry about a thing, man. We coming at y'all, man. We doing our thing. But, um, yeah, let me get a little bit of this intro once more uh, from the Brother Prince Uriel Bay. I'm going to get a little bit more into that spirit science and kind of balance that into a dismount. Let's go. Now, I know we've seen this before, but we're going to keep rewinding because so much drop is being had. And again, this is two hours, so we're going to get it, man. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. You know what I'm saying? But we got to we got to go back and listen. We got to keep listening because it's pretty amazing when you connect this stuff. So let's go. Indirectly to uh, the history and the origins of the United States Corporation and why it was formed, etc. But as I said, going back to the time of Atlantis, when we look at um, about 20,000 years ago, there was a process that occurred uh, that involved the Moors of Atlantis at that time. You also had Moors on uh, Mars, and um, you also... Okay, this is very, very important. Very important. You also have Moors on Mars. Now, what do you think that it's a planet or a uh, just a celestial connectivity, uh, you know, encampment in the connected celestial, like worlds beyond the pole. Mars on Mars, man. That opens up a whole can of shit. So let's get it. The languages of light. We're going to look at genealogy as well as true geography. Um, now I know that uh, is uh, is a lot, but as I said, all of these things relate directly and indirectly to uh, the history and the origins of the United States Corporation and why it was formed, etc. But as I said, going back to the time of Atlantis, when we look at um, about 20,000 years ago, there was a process that occurred uh, that involved the Moors of Atlantis at that time. You also had Moors on uh, Mars and um, you also had Moors who were living underground at that time. These were uh, masters, ascended masters uh, from the sixth dimension. And uh, I'll talk more about them in a minute. Oh, underground in the sixth dimension. So we're getting into the ascended masters from underground, not above the firmament. And if you think you're spinning on a ball, then you have no concept of what they're hiding from you. Because when you know that there's a barrier, it's very simple. Do you worship the creator above the barrier or the celestial? The celestial connected areas that are bombarding us with static. They want rulership of everything. What lineage, what energy, what thought is this? But the Moors that were actually living 
on Atlantis at that time, unfortunately, were involved in some experiments uh, similar to that of the Philadelphia experiment um, in the 40s uh, involving time travel. And uh, unfortunately, they lost control of this experiment. And when uh, things got out of control, ultimately, it caused the cataclysmic event or destruction of Atlantis. Um, the so the creator didn't do it. Nope, no divine creator. Now, even the, even spirit science, man, will tell you that there was a divine situation happening with this destruction. He just says, ah, oh, man, they did some stuff. They ripped open some portals and destroyed Atlantis themselves. Nope, the creator was just fine with everything. What creator? The Ten Islands of Atlantis. And um, in addition to which, uh, it ripped a series of holes through a number of dimensions. Um, and ultimately, that's what caused the uh, problems that occurred in and throughout the Moorish Empire uh, from that time up until the present. <laughs> so, the reason the Moors Moroccan hijack has fallen is because and only because of the portals from Mars, from Mars on Mars, and the experiments they were doing with the time travel celestial situation. They can do all this magic shit in the celestial, but above the barrier, they are powerless. Your power only connects above the barrier, and when you're connected above the barrier, you have the drop on the whole pie. Now, their job is to keep you away from your connectivity, above the barrier, your creator, so they hijack you with Thoth, Muhammad, Jesus, any other shit, so that you don't just rock with your creator of your trees, you think you need their harmonics and their sciences and their pyramids, because you don't know the energy that you're swimming in anymore, you're asleep, and they take advantage of it, so some portals is the reason why this all collapsed and fell, not the creator. Now let's go over to spirit science since we got them mentioning portals getting ripped open. Again, fair use. All up on your caboose bone. Every time. Every time. Criticism. Comment. News report. Teaching. Scholarship. Alright? Non-profit. Motherfucker. Let's go. Alright, I love y'all, man. You know, you know me. You know me. So we got portals. We got spirit science. Let's just get it from here. Of Atlantis, about the size of Rhode Island, sank into the ocean. This caused a tremendous amount of fear within the Atlanteans because they thought they were going to lose the whole continent, like what happened with Lemuria. Because of the consciousness shift, one of the bigger things they lost was their connection to the future. They couldn't foresee big events such as the potential sinking of their home. After about 200 years, this fear began to subside. Now, in both the Bible and the Sumerian records, the accounts of Adam, Eve, and all of their children were recorded to have exceptionally long lifespans, like 900 years or so. So 200 years for us back then is like 20 years for us today. We'll explain how we got there soon. Things kind of settled for a while, and then between 13,000 and 16,000 years ago, a comet approached the Earth. Because we were living at a high consciousness across all dimensions, the Atlanteans became aware of it before it hit. A great conflict occurred in Atlantis. The Martians, who were in the minority, even though they were in control, wanted to blow it out of the sky with their laser technology. However, the Nikals had learned of the comet's true nature, and the Atlanteans protested. They said that the comet was in divine order. They had to allow it to take place naturally. Let it... The comet was in divine order. Did you hear that? Now, they didn't know what the fuck was going on. They had to do some super prayer to their ascended master, the dweller. And these wisest people said, you know what? This thing is in a another order. It's not in our order. It's going to destroy everything we know. And this shit has nothing to do with us. It's a divine order. It's order, not chaos, for this to happen, for us to be destroyed. Because we're out of order. See? <laughs> it ain't just about... You ripping open portals and destroying this yourself. Now they say a comet. Now could this comet be a missile? Could they say incoming the creator just fired a missile? 
what should we do? Should we blow it out the sky? We could try, but you know what? This is order, y'all. He's just going to do it again. So we got to go to the Harry Barbarians. Listen again. For a while, and then between 13,000 and 16,000 years ago, a comet approached the Earth. Or a missile fired, right? Now, look at the target of this missile. They're going to say, oh, it's just some comet. And oops, it happened to hit where Poseidon set up shop. Is that by accident or was it a divine order? A missile, a targeted arrow hitting a target. Now, who sent this shit? Y'all want to talk about it? Morocco? Because it destroyed Morocco. It destroyed all of Atlantis. It destroyed all of the Moroccan Empire. All of this? Bang! Now you scattering trying to get other people's shit. You still trying to get other people's shit. But this thing hit you in divine order, bro. Now, I serve that order. So don't make me feel bad that I'm not down with your Moabite order. I serve the creator, not Shamash, not Thoth, not the Celestial. Oh, Joshua didn't invade you. You invaded the world. Because we were living at a high consciousness across all dimensions, the Atlanteans became aware of it before it hit. A great conflict occurred in Atlantis. The Martians, who were in the minority even though they were in control, wanted to blow it out of the sky with their laser technology. However, the Nikals had learned of the comet's true nature, mm. and the Atlanteans protested. They said that the comet was in divine order. They had to allow it to take place naturally. Mm. Let it hit the Earth. That's what's supposed to happen. Supposed to. The Martians fought the Atlanteans, but in the end they gave in. The Martians agreed to let it hit the Earth. When the time arrived, or maybe they could do nothing but let it happen. It came screaming into the atmosphere, plunging into the Atlantic Ocean, just off to the western shores of Atlantis, near where Charleston, South Carolina is now. Only that was... South Carolina? Right in North America, connected to this land here? Whoa. Hmm. It's at the bottom of the ocean at the time. I mean, look how that's connected to Virginia, which is also connected to this area, so... Where is Jerusalem? Let's go. The remnants of the comet are now scattered across four states, and science has definitely determined that it hit at least 12,000 years ago, if not more. They're still finding pieces today. Although the main portion struck near Charleston, a few fragments actually hit the main body of Atlantis, crashing into an area right where the Martians were living, killing a huge portion of their population. They were pissed. They said, it's all over. We're divorcing you, and we're going to do whatever we want. You can do what One you want, time. but we will never One leave time. at the time. The remnants of the comet are now scattered across four states, and science has definitely determined that it hit at least 12,000 years ago, if not more. They're still finding pieces today. Although the main portion struck near Charleston, a few fragments actually hit the main body of Atlantis, crashing into an area right where the Martians were living. Right where Poseidon was living, the Martians was living. Moors on Mars. Man, if y'all ain't understand, if y'all ain't understand, man. I mean, man. Living on Atlantis at that time, unfortunately, directly and indirectly to uh, the history and the origins of the United States Corporation and why it was formed, etc. But as I said, going back to the time of Atlantis, when we look at um, about 20,000 years ago, there was a process that occurred uh, that involved the Moors of Atlantis at that time. You also had Moors on uh, Mars. Bang. Let's go. Right here even though they were in control, wanted to blow it out of the sky with their laser technology. However, the Nikals had learned of the comet's true nature, and the Atlanteans protested. They said that the comet was in divine order. They had to allow it to take place naturally. Bang. Let it hit the earth. That's what's supposed to happen. The Martians fought the Atlanteans, but in the end they gave in. The Martians agreed to let it hit the earth. When the time arrived, it came screaming into the atmosphere, plunging into the Atlantic Ocean, just off to the western shores of Atlantis, near where Charleston, South Carolina is now. Only that was at the bottom of the ocean at the time. 
The remnants of the comet are now scattered across four states, and science has definitely determined that it hit at least 12,000 years ago, if not more. They're still finding pieces today. Although the main portion struck near Charleston, a few fragments actually hit the main body of Atlantis, crashing into an area right where the Martians were living, killing a huge portion of their population. They were pissed. They said, it's all over, we're divorcing you, and we're gonna do whatever we want. You can do what you want, but we will never listen to you again. We know this whole bit. We've seen it in divorced families throughout the world. And the children- Divorced families throughout the world, so now let's have fun surfing the wave. We're just talking a, fa a family affair. We're just talking family and boule. We're just talking family and law. So is this the family affair? You know, let's get out of their heads and get into our heads. Let's pick it up from right here. Moors on Mars. These Mars, this Moors, Mars setup, this Atlantis, this Moroccan, Mar, Moroccan Empire destroyed, this Amexum destroyed by a divine missile. Plato calls it an earthquake. <laughs> a huge destruction destroys these Mars, these Mars. And then they want to pick it up and recolonize here and recolonize here and say, hey guys, it's all Moab. It's all ours. For Thoth. Now we're a divorced couple. Alright? What energies? What are these? <laughs> Look between the lines. Now you got a divorced couple. Two melanated families against each other. Children? Well, look at our modern world today. We are the children. You can guess what the Martians did next. Their primary interface with the reality was control. And when their anger rose to meet their desire for control, they decided to take over the Earth. Okay. They began to once again... Ha <laughs> ha! What did the Moors do? They got back into their Moor science and built pyramids over your sacred trees. No more trees. They built synthetic Merkaba centers, 440 hertz. Let's go. Create a complex like the one they built on Mars long ago to try and create another synthetic Merkaba. If they another had succeeded, synthetic they would have been control over everything on the planet. The only thing was, around 50,000 Earth years had passed since they had built a Merkaba, and they didn't quite remember how to do it. But they thought they did. The Martians built the buildings in Atlantis. They set up the whole experiment through the switch. They built the buildings in Atlantis? Now what happened? Remember about these experiments? Hold up. I mean, this goes, <laughs> this goes hand in hand. Let's pick it back up. And um, you also had Moors who were living underground at that time. These were uh, masters, ascended masters uh, from the sixth dimension. And uh, I'll talk more about them in a minute. But the Moors that were actually living on Atlantis at that time, unfortunately, were involved. The Mars, the Martians, Moors on Mars, the Mars that was living on Atlantis, hijacking Atlantis, hijacking the land of the Creator, Canaan, Poseidon, Lego, Vishnu, let's go. Some experiments uh, similar to that of the Philadelphia experiment um, in the 40s uh, involving time travel. And uh, unfortunately, they lost control of this experiment. And when uh, things got out of control, ultimately, it caused the cataclysmic event or destruction of Atlantis, um, the Ten Islands of Atlantis. And um, in addition to which, uh, it ripped a series of holes through a number of dimensions. Stop. Out of control. Go. And lost control. The destruction was immense. In this reality, you can hardly make a greater error than to create an out of control Merkaba. The experiment began to rip open the dimensional levels. Not the higher ones, but the lower ones. Wow. To give an analogy, if you took a knife and slid open your stomach, the stomach acids would seep into other parts of the body that it's not supposed to be in. That's like ripping open the dimensions. The they ripped open the dimensions. Now, you don't live on a ball. You live on a flat plane and all these celestial areas revolve around you and that is Thoth's trick to think that you're small they're big in reality they're small 
you're big. But it caused a dimensional tear. I mean, ain't that right, uh, brother Prince uh, Uriel Bay? Ascended masters uh, from the sixth dimension, and uh, I'll talk more about them in a minute. But the Moors that were actually living on Atlantis at that time, unfortunately, were involved in some experiments uh, similar to that of the Philadelphia experiment um, in the 40s uh, involving time travel. And uh, unfortunately, they lost control of this experiment. And when uh, things got out of control, ultimately it caused the cataclysmic event or destruction of Atlantis, um, the Ten Islands of Atlantis. And um, in addition to which, uh, it ripped a series of holes through a number of dimensions. Um, and ultimately that's what caused the uh, problems that occurred in and throughout the Moorish Empire. Stop. No. Ultimately, Thoth is what caused the problems in and throughout the world. Not just Thoth, but the whole band of them. You were doomed by going against order from the start. You were risen up, specifically as that against Joshua and the frequency that Joshua is protecting. Now, you may not believe that, but see, we do because we're from another lineage and this lineage is hijack free. This lineage was created to be hijack free and we all must choose up. It doesn't mean everybody's going to do it. It means that we know how to dismiss static we know how to dis you know pull out these plugs that have been plugged in with this access consciousness grid this grid this grid after they tear open the dimensional portals they tear open these dimensions and these low vibrations start to come on you and you say why am i having so much static today it's the mars on mars causing dimensional portal you know destruction chaos look at the chaos look at the chaos from these moors on mars i mean i'm not telling you moors are on mars prince Uriel bay is breaking that down martians almost destroyed the earth the environmental disaster we are experiencing today is nothing in comparison wow so today's disasters are a direct result of these events because of this tear in the dimensional levels, a huge number of lower dimensional spirits and beings were thrown out of their comfort zone and into these higher levels. They were forced into a world that they did not know or understand. To survive, they needed bodies and began automatically entering into the bodies of people. What? Thoth? You started hijacking people? For every human body, there were hundreds of lower dimensional spirits inhabiting them. These beings were earthlings like us, but very different, not coming from this dimension. It was a catastrophe. Probably the biggest the Earth has ever seen. The reason the, the biggest the Earth has ever seen caused by these knuckleheads trying to be the creator. Now look at the Nicals. You already heard the brother Prince Yero Bay bring up these Nicals and the Tad, the Tad, uh, you know, you know, whatever the Covenant of Tad, whatever the Tad group is. Let's go. The calls were special. It wasn't just because of their incredibly high consciousness, making them like guides of Atlantis. They also had achieved what today we call immortality. Let's just say they figured out a way to keep their body healthy and young for as long as they chose mm. and could choose to pass on whenever they desired it. Cycles. When reincarnating, they do not suffer the great memory loss that we do when we incarnate. They did it through their expanded consciousness and tantric interdimensional sex meditation. Whoa, sex meditation. All right. So they moved in circles with little known or lesser known angles. That's how they got back to their bodies and they spoke a vibration through with their calling the circle and the cross and this vibration they spoke to this protected them from the hounds of the barrier what barrier it's in the emerald tablets chapter tablet eight sex meditation hijack city 
Welcome to Hijack City. The calls were special wasn't just because of their incredibly high consciousness, making them like guides of Atlantis. They also had achieved what today we call immortality. Let's just say they figured out a way to keep their body healthy and young for as long as they chose, and could choose to pass on whenever they desired it. When reincarnating, they do not suffer the great memory loss that we do when we incarnate. They did it through their expanded consciousness and tantric interdimensional sex meditations. Whoa. This is how Thoth was a priest king of Atlantis for thousands of years and stayed Whoa. on Earth until 15 years ago when he gave all of his memories and understanding about sacred geometry to a man named Drunvalo Melchizedek. Now I look this guy up. This is why I do that claims to have all his drop. Did Thoth give all his drop to him? I don't think so. Dot to hijack. But let's go. The Merkaba is formed out of three star tetrahedrons overlaid on top of each other. Two of them are counter-rotating and the third is stationary. When the Merkaba is formed with the unity consciousness, it is formed internally with love. Internally with unity. But what happens when you do synthetic Merkabas, Moabites? When it is formed externally through the Lucifer experiment, Pyramid. it does not have that love and can become unstable very quickly. Pyramid. Synthetic. Unstable. In internally. Unity. Love. Oh, Melchizedek. The Merkaba is formed out of three star tetrahedrons overlaid on top of each other. Two of them are counter-rotating and the third is stationary. When the Merkaba is formed with the unity consciousness, it is formed internally with love. When it is formed externally through the Lucifer experiment, it does not have that love and can become unstable very quickly. The Martians' attempt at controlling the world took place on one of the small islands in the west of Atlantis. This place today is known as the Bermuda Triangle. It's a triangle because the top of the stationary tetrahedron of the Merkaba is actually sticking out of the water there, which mm. causes a huge electromagnetic imbalance in that area. Mm. Many planes and boats have reported to have gone missing there. They just vanished without a trace. Mm -hmm. The imbalance is multidimensional, and in many cases, these ships and planes have been sucked into different dimensions, never to be seen again. That Merkaba is still there on the sea floor today, but from what I know, it's going to be corrected soon. Hmm. The Nikals did their best to save Atlantis. They sent most of the lower dimensional beings back, at least as many as they could, and sealed up the dimensional tear. Despite this, the situation got really bad, really fast. All of the economic systems collapsed. Financial, social, and all concepts of how life ought to be. Is this where white people come from? I mean, you know, I'm not trying to jam nobody up, but he said all these, through this dimensional tear, all these hijacks came. And so hijack I mean, everyone's looking around for the, for the, uh, you know what I'm saying? For the beginnings, for the bones, for the start of this thing. Where these people come from? They're not the indigenous of Europe. They're not the indigenous of Asia. They're not the where they come from. I mean, does this got anything to do with this? And is that why they would make treaties with these people today? He completely broke down. Everyone on Atlantis began getting sick with weird diseases, and the entire continent went into a state of survival. Famine. Life was no longer about living. It became about surviving until tomorrow. Plague. It was a literal hell on earth. The Nicals had no idea what to do. They were children compared to the events that had been thrust upon them. So, they prayed. <laughs> they prayed to the highest levels of conscious life in the universe, asking for help from anyone who could hear them. The problem was reviewed on many high levels of life. High levels. Look at Thoth and them. Here they come. Why I'm drawing is the Justice League, because the 11th and 12th dimensions are completely incomprehensible to us in our current state. So he describes the high level angels as these guys, just like they do with cartoons today, right? So that lets you know that all of your cartoons... And these figures are representing their angels. Well, let's go. What they told us was this. We were going to fall. We were going to hit rock bottom. Mm. Level one. The lowest place we possibly could be in the universe and still survive. Also, we were changing polarity. We were no longer a female species. So we were starting from square one as a male species. Okay. And finally, and this was the shocker, we would only have 13,000 years to return to Christ consciousness. Christ Normally, consciousness. Normally, it takes hundreds of thousands of years for a species. That hijack's never late. Now, we got this last time. Let's belly flop right here to about the 45-minute mark. Again, you got the link, so just click the whole thing, man. It's, 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 it's pretty tasty. I'll tell you that. And onk their sexual energy. Now, this can okay. be a huge topic on its own. Right. Like how energy travels up and down the body through a vertical tube between five energy channels. Now, that watch this. Watch this. They extend through the body. But basically, sexual energy is an incredibly powerful energy. We definitely abuse it today. But what the Egyptians knew was that when you had an orgasm, a very large amount of energy bursts from your root chakra all the way up your spine to the top of your head, and then it gets released. What the Egyptians would do was when the spiral of energy hit their heart chakra, they would onk the energy out of the back of their body and over their head and back into their body, where they would keep the energy and retain a massive energy boost. In other words, if you take a tuning fork and hit it, it will reverberate for a certain amount of time. 
Then, if you attach an ankh on top of it and hit it again, it will reverberate at least three times longer. Now, that gets into the tantra and all this kind of stuff. Now, you know what I'm saying? You belly flop as you, you know, like into the origin of all these things, but pretty sure when you get into the origin of all these things, you get a bunch of, you know, it's, it's not even so much that, you know, some of this stuff is evil of this and this, and it's the order and how it's done. You know what I'm saying? When these things are re replacing the creator, when they're replacing order, when they're coming in between and they're being used, uh, you know, this energy is now being used to conquer other people or something like this. It's not just a personal thing that they're doing. This is a sexual, you know what I'm saying, type of, you know, energy that they're getting to get energy over you, to conquer you. It's not about the individual satisfaction, guaranteed. This is all energy that's conquering you. You see, it's synthetic. It has everything to do with the outer Merkaba, not the united Merkaba within you. You are the pyramid, my people. The Egyptians were doing this with their bodies. Moving on. I said, my people, you are the pyramid. They're just creating you. When Atlantis was first formed, the Nikal set up something called a mystery school. Listen up. This is a special type of school where you learn about consciousness, and you learn different aspects of expanding your own consciousness, and eventually getting to a place where you become immortal. Mm. It usually took a very long time to achieve this state, and that's why there were only about 1,000 Nikals in comparison to the millions of Lemurians at the start of Atlantis. The first Atlantean to reach the immortal state was a man named Osiris. Ancient Egypt's mythology tells a story about Osiris, a man who was killed and cut up into pieces by his brother in an act of rage, and then the pieces were scattered. This event, perhaps less exaggerated than the myths, actually did happen, and it took place on Atlantis. Osiris's wife and sister retrieved the pieces, and upon returning the final piece, they restored the creative energy flow and brought his spirit back into the body. Through doing this, Osiris became immortal, and he was the first immortal of Atlantis. This story is told throughout ancient Egypt on many temple walls, and I'm going to show you why. Osiris went through the three stages of consciousness. The first one was whole, the second was separated from itself, included physically, and the third was whole again. The Nikals used Osiris' understanding of how he became immortal as a template for how others could do it as well, only through consciousness, without needing to be cut up, of course. This eventually became... So the creator creates your energy immortal. And then they reduce you to the beasts of the field. And then they say we have sciences to make us immortal in our celestial heavens. Our promise. The creator is no longer in the equation when you try to make yourself immortal in the celestial illusion. When in reality you were created this way. You are the pyramid, my people. Came what we would call the religion of Atlantis. But it was more of a deeper understanding that they were following. This template was also used in Egypt, which we will look at now. Through the stair step evolution, we began to change from the first level of consciousness into the second. Before the fall, we had incredible memories. It wasn't this vague recollection that we have now, but today we might see it as full tilt 3D holographic memory. After the fall, we still had a photographic memory and could share these experiences with each other, which is called dream time. It is what the Aborigines of Australia still have today. Through the introduction of writing, however, we began to change from the first level of consciousness into the second. We lost our incredible memories and became very separate from each other. Whoa, so through the introduction of writing, now Thoth is Mr. Introductory Writing Man. So did this, introdu in this introduction of writing help you or hurt you? Look how they're breaking it down, and I think this is major drop. Because our brothers out there today, uh, you know what I'm saying, where's your writing? Where's this writing? Where's that writing? Man, you didn't need it. Before thought, you didn't need it. Through the stair step evolution, we began to change from the first level of consciousness into the second. Before the fall, we had incredible memories. It wasn't the. It's their step, stair step, not your stair step. It's their stair step. It's their mystery school. They're creating their own stair step, but it's backwards. Look how this goes backwards. Vague recollection that we have now, but today we might see it as full tilt 3D holographic memory. After the fall, we still had a photographic memory and could share these experiences with So them. after the fall of Atlantis, people could still have photographic memories and send them to one another telepathically. But what happened after thought? Each other, which is called dream time. It is what the Aborigines of Australia still Indigenous. Have Through the introduction of writing, however, we began to change from the first level of consciousness into the second. We lost our incredible memories and became... So we went from the first to the second by going down? You see this hijack? Very separate from each other and ourselves. 
Thoth was the one who introduced writing. And if you look at ancient Egyptian culture, it Thoth was the one that introduced writing, but what did writing do to you, so-called Negro, indigenous? It is what the Aborigines of Australia still have today. Through the introduction of writing, however, we began to change from the first level of consciousness into the second. We lost our incredible memories and became very separate from each other and ourselves. Bang. Thoth was the one who introduced writing. Bang. And if you look at ancient Egyptian culture, it even says, Thoth brought writing to us, as well as many other things. Now that we were in the second level... Over no, 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 you don't just skip now that we're in the second level, just without addressing that this motherfucker just took you from having dream time, tele... <laughs> Being telepathic, having dream time, like the indigenous Australians to doing what? One more time. Through the stair step evolution, we began to change from the first level of consciousness. Egypt and Sumer stair step, not Israelite stair step. This is backwards. Let's go. Into the second. Before the fall, we had incredible memories. It wasn't this vague recollection that we have now, but today we might see it as full tilt 3D holographic memory. After the fall, we still had a photographic memory and could share these experiences with each other, which is called dream time. Right. It is what the Aborigines of Australia still have today. Right. Through the introduction of writing, however, uh -oh. Uh -oh. we began to change from the first level of consciousness into the second. We lost our incredible memories and became very separate from each other and ourselves. Thoth was the one who introduced writing. And if you look at ancient Egyptian culture, it even says Thoth brought writing to us. So did Thoth help you or hurt you? Or did he separate you into what they're calling duality? You're no longer united. You have no unity. You have no internal Merkaba, no high resonance, but now they have synthetic Merkabas and disunity. Look around. As well as many other things. Now that we were in the second level, over time, things began to change, and a very serious problem developed, which if it hadn't been solved, it would have caused a major catastrophe in our own near future. Basically, in Egypt, the Ascended Masters had used Osiris's genetic coding of changing chromosomes to show others the path of ascension. They developed a system of 42 and 2 gods, with a lowercase g. <laughs> they were actually called Neaters. Most will recognize this one. His name was Anubis. There were 42 and 2 Neaters, who were representative of human chromosomes. Each one of them showed a specific pathway of life or human experience, and people would follow these understandings to learn more about their life or their own reality. The problem developed when both Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt became more separated from themselves, and the meanings of these Neaters were lost. Over time, the drawings of these Neaters changed, and the meanings changed with them. People had no idea what they meant. Then it got worse, when the Egyptian king Menes merged Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt into a unified country. Menes also merged the belief systems, so now you had 88 gods that people were fighting over to decide who was really god. This was an issue, because now they had people not knowing what to believe, completely lost, separated from their understanding of their own divinity and god. Things became separated further, people fought over which gods were really gods. Today we look back and say, wow, <laughs> they thought there were so many gods. When really, this wasn't the case at all. Even with the help from the Tad Brotherhood, we just couldn't get it right. The Tad Brotherhood. And this is what you kept hearing in the previous part. Go back to it from the Brother Prince Uriel Bay. The Tad Brotherhood. Their Ascended Masters are the Tad Brotherhood. Now that you know this is Mars on Mars, this is, the, this is their Ascended Masters. These are their gods. There was one short period of Egyptian culture that most historians don't really understand. As it's written in ancient texts and hieroglyphs, for 17 and a half years, there was a bizarre new ruler that completely changed how Egypt was run. And his name was Akhenaten. Before him, there were only kings. Akhenaten was the first pharaoh, which meant that which you will become. He was also, believe it or not, 15 to 16 feet tall. At least, that's how he was always depicted, and had an elongated skull. Both of these aspects are related to Christ consciousness. Akhenaten abolished all previous understandings of God and tried to instill a one-God understanding in everyone. After 17 years, the majority of Egyptians revolted and Akhenaten was killed, soon to be replaced by someone else, returning to the old system. What actually happened? To correct the problem, Thoth got the help from I and Tia, who were the first immortals from Lemuria, and got them to mate interdimensionally to conceive a Christ consciousness being. Thoth said that he worked with the previous kings of Egypt to help achieve this, and Egyptologists find that Akhenaten came completely out of nowhere. It took some time, and there was a transitional period involving Amenhotep III, but soon Akhenaten was on the throne. Akhenaten used his So he's Thoth born. Thoth created. Akhenaten. Thoth born. Thoth Moses. Thoth Moses. Thoth Moses. Thoth Moses. Akhenaten. Now what's... They're trying to bring it back to a unity. They understand. Now. Which unity? <laughs> unity for who? Let's go.
time to bring Egypt back to a simple religion where there was one god, one reality. He used imagery of a sun disk to represent this. The priests in Egypt didn't like that because the religious beliefs were centered on the priests. Then he comes along and says, you don't need priests, God is within you, and you can access God from within your own selves. Mm. Well, they didn't like that. He also pulled the military back and said, don't attack unless someone else attacks first. The military didn't like him either. Plus, the people generally didn't like him because they enjoyed worshipping their many gods. Eventually, they disposed of him. After mm. all that, what did Akhenaten do that evidently saved humankind? Well, he developed the mystery school with the intention of showing a small group of humans a way to ascend into the immortal state. Usually, it took hundreds of years to reach the level of immortality, and Akhenaten had 17 years to produce results. This was a very close call, but he did it. He actually showed 300 individuals the path to immortality in this short time. So after the general population disposed of Akhenaten, these 300 immortals would go beyond Egypt. So it kind of sounds like the Greeks in Sparta, right? 300, let's go. Both wrote in the Emerald Tablets that after ancient Egypt ended, he brought a man named Pythagoras into the Great Pyramid and taught him the geometry of the universe. That man then went on to found Greece, which was originally built upon school. Greece, Sparta, 300, let's go. ...for teaching geometry and the platonic solids and all of that stuff. Thoth lived a lifetime here as well, where he was known as Hermes Trismegustus. Akhenaten... Hermes Trismegustus, Thoth, Muhammad, let's go. ...the immortals became a group called the Essene Brotherhood. They first migrated to a place called Masada in Israel. Even today, Masada is known as the capital of the Essene Brotherhood. Now get this. Now they're connecting the Essenes. The Essenes. Now, then you can say, okay, well, we know we had the shepherd kings in Egypt. Some say Akhenaten's coming out of a Hebrew lineage. Now you have these shepherd kings and these Spartas coming out. Now they are connected to the Essenes. Now they're connected to... Uh, what they call it, the, uh, let's get it. Brotherhood. Now get this. In this brotherhood, there were two people in particular. Schools for teaching geometry and the platonic solids and all of that stuff. Thoth lived a lifetime here as well, where he was known as Hermes Trismegustus. Akhenaten's immortals became a group called the Essene Brotherhood. They first migrated to a place called Masada in Israel. All right, so you hear about this Masada, all right? You know what I'm saying? The last fort, last stronghold, let's go. Even today, Masada is known as the capital of the Essene Brotherhood. Now get this. In this brotherhood, there were two people in particular. A man and a woman. You might have heard of them. Mary and Joseph? <laughs> See, it was part of the Ascended Master's plan that they would bring in a being who would show the... Now they're bringing in Christos. That's the hijack. Oh, now Mary and Joseph, and here comes Christ. Now. <laughs> that train's never late. So he's coming out of, you know, their connection that they're trying to connect this Christ into this, this, this. And now you got this Christ consciousness. Here's where you really got to dodge the hijack. But they're dropping plenty of drop in between this shit. But now enter their hijack Christ. Because Christ is this Ra, is this situation, is this Zeus. And it's the same is Zeus. They got to keep Zeus in the middle of this shit. Pathway to Christ consciousness. He would come to Earth as a second level being, a regular Joe. Look at this. And achieve Christ consciousness through Look the course this. of his life. Then, the ascension process... The transitional experience from the second to third level would go into the consciousness grid that was still being formed. He was so his energy by serving Christ, you are serving the hijacked grid that was set up by Thoth. So this Christ was continuing the energy of Thoth. So is Muhammad con continuing the energy of Thoth. As we have gotten in the OSB, as we get our dismount ready, we have a couple more minutes. As we've gotten in the OSB. Whereby Thoth, whereby Thoth rebelled against thee and set up his present heavenly dominions, inspiring his followers under the name Muhammad. Origin of Muhammadism. Muhammadanism. All right, so we got a little bit of this last time. We're going to kind of belly flop and get our uh, dismount on it right now. Click, pull up the link. Get a page, man. We're going to go to page 730. Let's jump. Okay, we got that last time. Let's go here to chapter 1. All right. 735. Let's go. So it says, The Lord said, Gabriel raised up upon the earth one Muhammad. <laughs> so they just said that Thoth is alias Gabriel. 
Thoth is Gabriel. And then it says, Gabriel raised upon the earth one Muhammad and inspired him through his angel host. And the angels inspired Muhammad to go once every month in the year into the cave of Hora, on which occasions Gabriel came in person. So Thoth came in person. Thoth is Gabriel, alias Gabriel, and talked with Muhammad. So Thoth and Muhammad, who had suis in great perfection. So this is their, you know, mystery school situation. Now, 12 years in peace did Gabriel Thoth inspire mortals through Muhammad. Just back up for those that are just jumping in this part four that did not, you know, as we, we just showed you Thoth, uh, you know, but I just want to get it from right here real quick, real quick. Gabriel, Gabriel. All right. Now for upward a thousand years, an angel warrior, Gabriel, alias Thoth. All right had been to Louis Mong, his most faithful sub-god. So this false Christ, Louis Mong, had a sub-god, God Thoth, who is an alias Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, or a angel named Gabriel, whichever one it is. All right. And Gabriel. Twelve years in peace did Gabriel, or Thoth, inspire mortals through Muhammad. But at the end of 13 years, Muhammad attained to sufficient strength to draw the sword for Gabriel's doctrine. So then 13 years later, Muhammad is now fighting for, you know, he is now Thoth. He's ready. And Gabriel, through inspiration, caused the Muhammadans to commemorate this as the beginning of his kingdom on earth. And they therefore consecrated the said period of time. And on the first meeting of the faithful and Gabriel, Thoth, Muhammad, being under inspiration of Thoth, spake before the multitude saying there is but one god and he is god heaven is his the earth so even muhammad was saying there's one god but who is his god the dweller whose thoughts god the master the dweller in the halls the ascended masters the halls of amente now the earth is the lord's through the angel gabriel this is the sum and substance of all things this was the doctrine of abraham and moses our forefathers, but he, but evil men had invented other gods, which had no existence. They are idols, which exist only in superstition and ignorance. Revere me not, nor cause me wise. So check it. <laughs> According to this OSB, Muhammad is trying to kick out and tell them about the creator. He's trying to tell them that the earth is the Lord's through the angel Gabriel. Now we got the thought. But then, very interesting, it says, this is the sum and substance of all things. This was the doctrine of Abraham and Moses. So, even Muhammad is kicking it to Abraham and Moses. But evil men had invented other gods, which have no existence. They are idols, which exist only in superstition and ignorance. Revere me not, nor call me wise. I am not wise. I have little learning. Knowledge coming to me from the unseen. My eyes are open. My ears are open. I see and hear.